In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the crankcases for my Kawasaki Z1 Super 6 from two Kawasaki Z1 crankcases and some of the tools I used. Now, I haven't got much video because I was too busy making it and I forgot to film it, but I got some good pictures as well, so hopefully it's okay. Anyway, see what you think. The first thing I have to do is to decide which set of crankcases will remain in the centre and which set will be cut for the outside additions. And this is determined by the amount of damage and where the damage is. I made some cardboard templates that I could overlay on the crankcases to see the external width of the engine. I was concerned it was going to be too wide, but in the end it wasn't. 24 inches, which is about the same as a Honda CBX. I do most of the cutting with simple hand tools. Firstly, my hacksaw, which I've had for years, has cut every engine I've ever made. I use special sand flex blades, 18 TPI, which are perfect for cutting aluminium, and they last for ages and they don't snap. Once the cases are cut, you need to file up the edges. I've got this really old file. It's made in America, I think around 1925, and it is really coarse and it rips the metal off. And because it's quite wide, it's easier to keep it flat. I've also got this aluminium finishing file, which is lovely and gives a really nice shiny finish and ever so easy to use. And lastly is my cross cut file for doing sort of finer work, doing chamfers and taking little edges off, sharp edges off and stuff like that. Very useful. So with the first set of crankcases gripped to my vice, I pick up my saw and start sawing. I always stagger the joints on my engines like brickwork, so you've got no joints lining up through the stack from the head, barrels to crankcases. The trick for cutting straight edges is don't force the blade through the aluminium, let it cut and feel its way. With the first set of crankcases cut, this is all I need, the rest is sadly scrap, although I do keep them just in case I need to repair some other crankcases with the parts. And here's the outer crankcase parts, bolted together, ready for milling. And here's the central part of the crankcase that I no longer need. You can see where the cuts were made. And here's the two ends, the left and the right hand side, which could be useful for repairing other engines. Or perhaps I could weld them back onto the crankcases and make a nice parallel twin, but I probably won't. This is my 1950s Elliott Miller machine. I dug it out of a garden in 1999 to build my V12. I had to restore it first, but that was easy. It's just cast iron. You just got to give it a clean and oil everything up and it worked great. And it's worked great ever since. It's got a bit of play, but I know where it is and I can work with it. It's a lovely old machine. You can't get them like this anymore. And here's the left hand casing on the Miller machine to mill up the surface I've just sawed with a hacksaw. It's quite true really, I only had to take a little skim, but it's nice to do it on the machine, it makes it so much easier. When I'm using my old mill, I take things quite steady really, so I cut at a slow speed and turn the handle slowly. The central crankcase has its left hand side cut off, ready to accept the new piece of casting. So I put this on my miller machine and clock up surfaces with my DTI that have been machined at the factory in Japan so to make sure that my new surfaces are also square. To hold everything in line for welding, I've made up these two mandrels and they have holes in them to miss the little pegs that are in the main bearings on the Z1 engine. Here you can see the central crankcase with the mandrels clamped into the main bearings and the left hand extra piece of crankcase is clamped in place, ready for welding. At this point, it looks like a pretty nice five cylinder. In fact, I almost left it as a five but I decided to carry on and make it a six because that's more central and more even. And I said it was going to be a super six, otherwise it'd be a super five, and that wouldn't sound right. I clamped the crankcases onto my milling machine table and clocked up the clutch gasket surface with my DTI so that it was true to the milling machine axis. Then, when I machined the front of the crankcase, that will also be true. With everything clamped in the correct position, I start the milling process to clean up the surfaces so that the additional piece of crankcase will mate, mate up perfectly for welding. This is done by hand, by gently feeding the axis.
With the machining complete, I offer up the right hand crankcase addition and it fits nicely on the mandrel, so I take everything outside to give it a good clean. Because of the coronavirus lockdown, I didn't really want to take them to get them vapour blasted because that wouldn't be right. Can't really class that as an essential journey. But anyway, I thought I'd have a go with a wire brush and an electric drill. And I was absolutely amazed at the result I got. It's really, really good. It takes a long time, but in the end, it came out really nice. And I had plenty of time because we we're on lockdown. With the crankcases cleaned up, the next thing I needed to do was file down some bits of old engine mounting bracket I no longer needed. And the best way to do this is with my coarse aluminium finishing file and I use my Black & Decker Workmate and an old G-clamp to clamp it in place. With all the filing and the machining complete, it's time to give them a good wash with a jet wash. This gets all the swarf out of everywhere and makes them look nice. And once they've been dried off, they're perfect for welding. Next, I assembled the crankcases and put them in my barbecue and gave them a good heating up, ready for welding. I tried to get them out to at least 150 degrees. This can be difficult when they're so large, but I give it a go. And this is my 200 amp AC-DC TIG welder. It runs on single phase electricity. I bought it about 10 years ago and it works quite well, although I could really do with a bigger one. With the welding complete, I used my Dremel to clean up all the welds to make them smooth and make the engine blend together as one. I always leave the mandrels bolted in place to the last possible minute to allow the crankcases to stress relieve. And here's my second Super 6 engine, part built with 1522cc barrels. I hope you enjoyed this video on how I made the crankcases for my Z1 Super 6. I had a bit of luck on eBay the other day, got myself a couple of cylinder heads off an old Z900. They're just here on the bench. I'll be cutting them up soon, so hopefully in the not too distant future there'll be a video on how I made the head.